One, two, three, Season's greetings, season's screamings, screamy seasy. How's it going? Hello. Tricksters, treatsters, <laughs> all you can eatsters. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Fume, Halloween edition. We're gonna be obviously recording throughout October. This is not your one shot Halloween programming. Merely the beginning. This is merely the beginning. This is where we break the seal on our vast collection of Halloween-y perfumes released by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Uh, like, weirdly ahead of where we have in the past few years because we were blessed slash cursed, blursed with a uh, series of limitations because of our cross-country move to Philly, which meant that we were, we had to bottle a little earlier, really gave us a kick in the ass, and so, uh, we're here in time for the Halloween season, and that means a lot of people ordering now slash yesterday should actually be receiving their Halloween perfumes in a more timely manner. Um, mission accomplished, y'all, uh, except for the fact that these are also very limited in quantity this year, uh, to begin with at least, because we are moving and we can't necessarily just like refresh stock and make more like we normally would for months on end. From what I know now, the bobbing for snake oil perfume is already sold out on the website. Um, some might be able to still get a decant, maybe through bpel.org, or you might have to wait and then hopefully a couple months down the road we can um, whip up a new batch. So that's where we're entering in the picture, and we actually do have a stash of the general catalog weenies. Not all of them, and it's very miscellaneous because it's just based on what's ready. Um, and I've just, you know, we pulled aside a few of them to just kind of drift through and sniff and, you know, get scared. So, I held aside actually some of the foodier BPAL Weenie GCs because I was like, maybe this is its own short little video. So, you know, we can do a whole little um, smorgasbord of those uh, coming up soon. But to start with, um, shall we just get, get moving? You're like desperate. Yep. <laughs> moving on ahead. Jump right in. It keeps me on track to watch Galen panic while I'm talking. So the first two that we are sniffing are the Heloise and Abelard perfumes that are inspired by the gorgeous little vintage marionettes that um, you saw maybe dancing in our uh, announcement video, uh, which was made right in this apartment. So these are just um, two beautiful little, I, I'm, I'm assuming Mexican in origin, street marionettes that are just very cute and creepy and we've got this beautiful little love story for them and uh, drew some inspiration from the doomed uh, historical Christian lovers Heloise and Abelard and so we have two scents that are meant to, they were created to be worn together like layered romantically kind of like the lovebirds that we did a few years ago um, but they're standalone fragrances also. So without further ado, adieu, So Heloise is the little witch puppet. When I was uh, talking about these with Beth, I think I wrote uh, churchy and witchy and puppety. And then Abelard was churchy and clowny and puppety. And it's like weird because you never know what's going to get spit back out. And fr um, from Elizabeth's creative genius perfumer brain, we have for Heloise a polished lime wood, myrrh smoke, and blackened spices. Obviously this is not our first time smelling this particular one because as soon as I had access to these I was like, I have to know. But I didn't have the notes for a long time. So when we were first smelling these without notes, descriptions, what jumped out at me right away was what I thought was juniper. Because there was definitely kind of like a fresh green something with like a bite. And I was like, oh that's juniper, I know for a fact. It turns out that what that is, is the lime wood. Isn't that amazing? And then I knew that there was some kind of incense in here, but I did not peg it as myrrh smoke. And of course, once you read it on a page, like that's all I can smell. Yeah, it is kind of limey. It's kind limey. of it's kind of limey. It has like this instant like acidic like bite right at the beginning. And then um, what I love about this is how kind of dry and crackly it is. And uh, people have been commenting on the video to say how much they think the witch puppet looks like Lady Elaine Fairchild from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Um, which I think is really f 
funny and sweet because that's of course like she was like a childhood friend of mine practically I feel like in my brain Lady Elaine was like a neighborhood bully you know that I just like got used to living with it is churchy and witchy and puppety and at the time I had no idea that we were also going to be releasing a whole other collection of like witch perfumes so this is like bonus witch like how kind of like prickly it is. It has like a real kind of lovely like Baba Yaga quality to it. Like, you know, an unloved person with a lot of complicated feelings who has, uh, you know, a deep investment in the magical arts. When we found these puppets, uh, they were in very uh, dilapidated and had to be restrung and restored and now they are dancing quite nicely. And I was excited because her broom is intact. It's her original broom. Um, and uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of in love with this one. She's pretty great. Yeah. The hair, I'm afraid to touch it too much because it's just gonna come out. Yeah. Like my own real hair, my own hair. And um, <laughs> um but I just wish that I could pet her all day. I mean you can because she's yours. Well, right, but I want to be able to film future stuff with them, and I want it to be more than just like a, you know... Balding <laughs> Heloise's hair loss journey. Oh, no. Um, so we've been wearing this for a moment. Yes, and I, you know, I haven't worn it for this long and, like, really, like, hung out in here. Um, when you first apply it, like, the smokiness of the mer the myrrh smoke is, like... Is just much more strong. It doesn't necessarily smell like myrrh the way you'd think it would. I, I'm sorry if this is not making sense. Um, but as it cools, as it cools, as it, cools, as it hangs, as the myrrh cools, um, which is like a the Agatha Christie novel. Familiarity of the myrrh is coming through. Well, the I'll smokiness has settled. Overall, it just kind of like softens up in a kind of a way, which is kind of character revealing. You know, it's like this like crusty exterior that that is really kind of like uh, scratchy. You know, it's like a little intimidating in the bottle especially and then on the skin and it really does just like blend down into like a nice woody, um, woody spicy incense and yeah. it's just totally fine. And while we have it on the skin, let's get right into Abelard. So that we can actually layer them as intended uh, and the Abelard scent, again, I was smelling this blind, and I never, I had a description in my brain that was not this. Uh, coconut husk and pear wood with frankincense and carnation petals. So I'm such a bobo that when I was smelling the Heloise one, I thought that was frankincense, probably because of how scratchy it was. And I was like, okay, that's intense. Um, and I think of myrrh as being a, like a little sweeter and more comforting, and this is a little sweeter and more comforting. So... Uh, what I was actually, I was just completely backwards and fooled. So, in the bottle, there is, interestingly, some continuity, it seems like, with the recent, like, Blacklight Reactive Clown poster. It has that kind of strange, um, weird sweetness, but, like, and I thought that there was a grease paint note in here, and if it is, it's not listed. But, um, there's just something really, like, kind of, like, like a sweetness that was like it's like a clown and that there's like a kind of an uncomfortable sweetness at first yeah there's it's like a kind little of a, creepy a, like a, i'm not gonna lie a, a dark familiarity to it yeah i was like this is creepy and i had to like it took me a while to get into it to figure it out and then reading the notes actually helped me relax a lot because it wasn't like some evil clown potion that was gonna like take over my soul you know you never know with puppets what I think is so funny is that when we had smelled this before, not knowing the notes, I can't believe I didn't detect coconut. Like, I'm yes. I'm really astonished with that. And then, like, knowing that, smelling it, that's, like, definitely what I'm getting yes. the most from Yes, same the with bottle. carnation. And I'm just like, how did I not get that? I'm a carnation <laughs> aficionado, and I love it. And uh, when, as soon as I read it, I connected it to things about the scent that I liked. Um, but, like, ne I just couldn't do it. Like, I as are not a par parfumer. Uh, it takes a perfumer, I think, to really um, set someone up on a journey like this. And without the roadmap that we have in terms of the descriptions, or that's why I think it's people love watching these videos so much too, is because it's like truly you're just like out there without with half a paddle, you know? So on the skin, 
I do smell what I now know is the frankincense, like, much more clearly. Yeah. But the, the pear wood? Is pear wood, like, wood that smells like pear? It's, like, from the pear tree, I think, so there's got to be a little of bit of a pear essence, but I it's a woody pear. I do smell a kind of pear in um, here. <laughs> It's really, uh, what I love about this is that there is like a, like, it's ultimately, with the coconut and the pear wood together, there's like a kind of a gentle, woody sweetness that is just like very endearing, and it kind of sets up Abelard in the video. He's this kind of like, he emerges as like a really strange character where he's just like, he's intense, his face is intense, he's kind of hard to love, and I think it's jarring because Heloise's entrance, like, she's presented in this kind of relatable way where she's just kind of like angsty and like waiting around and then you see Abelard and he's just like out there like living the showbiz life um and then his sweetness is like slower to emerge I think uh so but there's like a kind of a spooky depth to this but it is ultimately a lot of like like really kind of comforting mm -hmm. and uplifting notes it reminds me a little of I guess this is probably the coconut husk. That's probably a bit brown jenkin. Like just ah. the, the softness of that and like and how comforting that smell is to me anyway. It, it's like, like a surprising I'm softness like, and in the context of what the scent is, it's all, it's a little unsettling because it's like being invited to snuggle up to something that you don't know if you want to, you I, know? I also think that the coconut husk is maybe what we were thinking is the grease paint quality to it. Like just that, the creaminess of it? I don't know. Um, just a thought. Carnation is a little creamy also. That's true. So I'm gonna layer these. I know we're spending a lot of time on these two, but... They are the stars. So, and you don't, if you want to save some real estate, you can just like smell it on me. Here's Abelard. Oh, I actually did, I had to do some mending on him. We, I stuffed him a little bit because his costume was so flat that it just didn't conceal the, the body inside. It's on the wrist. Okay. So, so together, you have the partnering of the Frank and Myrrh, you have the lime wood and the pear wood, which is two fruit, fruit you know, woods. fruity woods. <sighs> um, and then the carnation and then the blackened herbs. And so overall, there's just like this really interesting, like old, it's like, it just smells very old school. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, a truly like, it's kind of, again, like the Lovebirds where it was like a, a really vintagey fragrance experience. Mm -hmm. So I feel protective of him because he, I had to do some repairing on his hair and stuff also. So, the puppets are around, they're here to stay, hopefully we'll get to film some more stuff with them. And in the meantime, I just, I've been wearing uh, the scents separately, just to kind of get to know them, like, individually. But then, like, layered is really where I'm going to have to keep these bottles on the shelf and then just do some... We'll lay them safely on the floor. Oh! Oh my gosh, he like... It's so weird to me how puppets just kind of look at you <laughs> while they're, they're doing whatever... You're doing? So, moving on from Puppet Town. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine. Galen has entered the chat. Oh, I would love some water, though. Yeah. And that would be good. We're stretching. We're getting into, like, Am the, I, sure? I want to say, like, 10-minute mark where Galen, you know, Galen's soul enters his body again after hitting record. I go into a sort of shock. Yes. Oh, big time. And then I come back. Like, the videos, for making videos is a lot of fun, but they're also, like, it's work and we have to prepare for it and we have to, like, do, and by the time you actually sit down and have to, like, you know, show up, it's very challenging sometimes. Like, oh, so. no. It's like that oh, scene in no. Bond where I'm like, is she, is she, is she gonna be here? <laughs> Please don't fail me. And then she's Marilyn, here. She's here. Marilyn is here. She's smiling again. So the next one that I have pulled aside for us is another new one. Um called October 33rd. Last year we did my favorite day. October 32nd, which was an, a you know, a kind of a play on the idea of Halloween extending beyond October. And then uh, this year we kept the joke running with October 33rd. We also brought back October 32nd, but we're not reviewing it today cuz it's basic it's last year's formula. And it's the same, so... I think we've reviewed it, too. Like, we, yeah, we did back then, I believe. With Every Day is Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which I also didn't pull aside for today, because we kind of did it. It's not really different. It's out there. So October 33rd, it says, Don't mind us, we're just dis distorting time beyond all recognition to wring the last drop of fun out of the season. Spiced bourbon apples, pumpkin souffle, 
the dregs of your last PSL of the season, and a handful of candy corn. So kind of like a wonderful, everything must go, you know, final glimpse back at the Halloween season. So a little bit of everything. Woo! And uh, we leaned on Apple this year for Halloween, and so here it is. And that is Apple-y. It's like a nice kind of caramel apple coffee that I'm getting in the bottle. You know, like... Oh, wow. Whoa. Uh, the pumpkin souffle is really hard to distinguish in the bottle from like a PSL situation. So I'm not really worried about it too much. It is pumpkin-y though. Apple-y, pumpkin-y, candy-ish coffee. I'll put a little bit of Sweet that coffee. on the, the pinky, the knuckle of my pinky finger. Oh, I think I can smell my nose. Would you like me to smell your nose to see what it smells like? On the skin, I'll say that the candy note kind of leaps right out. It was suppressed in the bottle because I think the coffee and the pumpkin and the apple are all such, like, you know, heavy contenders. But uh, it has a kind of a lighter, sweeter, like, candy note on the skin immediately that I'm that reads as candy corn to me, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, I'm getting, like, flashbacks of trick-or-treating. And um, something a little warm and crumbly, which I think is maybe the pumpkin souffle, actually. Yeah, like kind of buttery. Yes. Buttery gourmand goodiness. Yes, there's this, I love that this is just kind of like a swir a seasonal swirl. It's not too, like, um, spicy, you know? So whatever the pumpkin spice is in there is kind of, you know, suppressed compared to, like, other things. It's like previously on last month. Yeah, we, are, we have. We're just like, oh, wow, that was good. We have a PSL... <laughs> Uh, fragrance so it's like you know we it's covered this is like really kind of allows some of the other stuff to like creep in it must have been a, all I can think when stuff like this lands is it must have been fun to make you know as a perfumer you get just like pull from like all of the all of your drawers and bottles you know and throw in that, stuff that this. sounds fun or that you think that other people will think is fun Pumpkin-y, for sure. I'm getting more of it as it settles. The spices are warming up on my skin, I will say. So it's even more spicy now than it was when I said it wasn't a moment ago. So it's going to be a fun shapeshifter because with so many elements in there, everyone's going to smell something gonna, different. Yeah. So yeah. if we want to keep it riding in a pumpkin-y direction, yeah. how about the shadowed veil? What's that? Um... This is a weenie that we have had before. It's okay. been a few years, I believe. So, um, and a friend of mine was obsessed with it, and I went on a dive in the lab to see if I could find a bottle to smell, and I was really excited to, you know, because there's so many perfumes that you don't ever necessarily get to appreciate them all. So the, the Shattered Veil is, it says, a strangely sensual, darkly fey, All Hallows' Eve cologne. A perfume of the other world, black pumpkin, leather, pomegranate incense, agarwood, and bourbon patchouli. And when I read this, I was like, how did I not smell this before? Hmm. How am I not smelling it right now? And I have the power to go and dig and find it and smell it. And it was exactly as exciting as... Open that bottle! Yes, okay, you let's did. get it. I did I it. Like, I opened well, it. I want to know. Yeah, I won't hide the secret from you anymore. Oh, whoa! I know, and after smelling <laughs> the really sweet pumpkin-y one... This, like, is such a swerve. It's like the, the road less taken, you know? Straight into the woods. <sighs> like, there is that, like, kind of Whoa. warm, comforting pumpkin smell as just kind of, like, a last look back at, you know, everything, uh, everything familiar and uh, glowing about the season. And then that agar wood is right there to kind of like, it has a nice like serrated edge. So it's not too boozy, and I like that the patchouli is sweetened up. Um, it's just like a, a, a whole mood. It's a very specific kind of like dark fall blend. I think I have to sneeze. Well, you're entitled to do so. What would a perfume it program be without a little sneezing? I'm surprised we don't sneeze more often. <laughs> well, it ain't called 15 minutes of sneezing. Um, it might be. Uh, there are freaks out there who would probably prefer it. Um, and like the, the pause on us like mid sneeze making like the worst faces. I, the leather is coming out on the skin. I wasn't really getting it in the bottle so much. Whoa, 
it's so dark. Yes. It's like, it reminds oh me a little bit of the Escape from the um, Autumn Carnival that we Though did with that one is Roush. A lot more leather forward. It's leather, more, that was more leathery and more smoky, and this is yeah. just like a, like a dark oud patchouli pumpkin leather incense. I mean, I'm just at this point reading the notes. It smells like the description. God damn. It's, it's really something. It's like some of the Halloween stuff, like we were talking before about something smelling, you know, like are so familiar at this point that it might smell like an autumn candle or something that you could get anywhere. And this kind of definitely takes this into, you know, the other world. Yeah. Yeah. It rests in a very kind of uneasy, like, leather agarwood place that has, like, you know, I don't know, like, it's, like, darkly comforting, but, you know, there's, like, there is, like, a scent of bite quality to it. I, I agree. Every time I go back to the though, I also get a little bit of that, like, sweetness. So, I don't know. It's just, like, uh, it just kind of, like, revolves, and it's a little disorienting, because I feel like every time I smell it, I pick up something else. Yeah. Do you want to go further into the abyss? Sure. Would, you like, would you like to go further? Uh, because next we have Oil and Blood, which I believe is a first time around GC Weenie. <laughs> about your Cenobite. I know, I know. It's like October 33rd happened, which is like a clock going off and taking you to a day that doesn't exist. And now <laughs> we are wandering around in the woods being snacked on by otherworldly creatures. And I'm fine with it. There's a Yeats poem, which is always a good sign. If you, I don't know why people buy perfumes that aren't um, accompanied by a Yeats poem. Um, it says, thick blackened rivulets of blood soak through linen, winding sheets, and cold clay. So, yeah, Halloween. You know, it's not just kid stuff. It's not just, like, cartoony pumpkins, you know. Sometimes it's... Sometimes it gets serious. Winding linen sheets. Yeah. Linden, lin <laughs> <laughs> linen... Linen... Linen winding, winding sheets. sheets. You know, for, like, uh, wrapping a corpse. Wow, is this the right one? Oil and blood? It smells so different than it did. Yes, it is. Yeah, I got the bloodiness of it. So it's like a all, really intense bloody tang. And I was like, when I smelled, because I smelled this on Friday, and I was just like, what is this? It's so different than... And I looked up the nose, I was surprised. Right now, and I don't know if it's because of what I just smelled, I'm actually getting the linen. The first thing that I got was like a, the, a bit of like the fresh linen, but it kind of a cool like clammy linen yeah i get it in there too you're going on a different but there is like that undeniable blood tank <laughs> i was like what the cold clay the cold clay i mean there's it's funny how you feel a temperature shift in the perfume yes that's what makes it feel like a visitation in a way it's like you know because the um the Shadowed Veil still had this kind of, like, warm, like, beguiling, like, seductive quality. I definitely smell the linen, like, right away, and it's kind of almost sweet and gentle, which is weird. It's, it's a gonna different... Shift. <laughs> it's a different kind of seduction. It really has an of-the-tomb quality. It has this kind of, like, um... I was gonna say earthiness, but it's not, like, a dirt smell. No. But it definitely smells cavernous. And I am getting, like, the blood smell. And for some, I guess, it might leap right out like it did for you. Um, but the linen is a lot more forward on the skin. It's just very solemn and spooky. And I can imagine this being just, like, extremely attractive to encounter, like, on somebody's neck, for example. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, uh, give the world... A present and let them smell it on you oil and blood the simplicity of it is definitely going to appeal to a lot of people and especially that it's like really an atmospheric scent like that yeah it's not so bloody and goopy like some of the blood scents that we have like it's like blood popsicle and like um, some of the dragon's blood stuff and it's all very kind of like there's like a sweetness as well as the metallic quality and whatever this is different this is different um, that takes us, okay, you want to go into another totally different direction, to new G.C. Weenie L.A. River Pumpkin. Mm -hmm. 
For those who do not know, the LA River is in the process of rewilding because it was paved over in the 20th century uh, as part of like an industrial city planning process, which was a mistake. Um, you don't do that to a river. It turns out rivers were made to flow. Let the river run. Let the river run. Thanks, working girl. It's a it's a really interesting, beautiful place where there's like a lot of wildlife um, and uh, people. I spend a lot of time there. There's, you know, folks who like a, a, to step away from like the sort of urban feeling. Um, you know, there's like people who live down there. Um, people who rollerblade there, you know, like the whole gamut. Ride your bikes. I like to ride my bike down there. So, um, and this is just like a carved jack lantern that we found, apropos of nothing, in September, just hanging out. And then there was another one a little further down. So, but it really struck me when we were building the collection that this was like a last look for B Pal living in LA because um, everyone's moving. I mean, most everyone is moving across the country and LA River Pumpkin is the kind of perfume that we just probably won't really be doing anymore because the lab lives somewhere else. So the scent notes are an offering of sun-warmed pumpkin flesh anointed with slithering green musks, sun-dried grasses, pineapple juice, and squished prickly pear fruit. So like just from reading this it's like what on earth could it possibly smell like, you know? What's the cumulative effect? What's the flesh impact? Going back to Marilyn Monroe. So it's not aquatic, though. That's what's it's, interesting. It's she not, did not go aquatic with it. It's not aquatic. Not aquatic. Not aquatic. Well, I'm smelling the pumpkin. <sighs> I smell the pineapple, like... The, yeah, the... Yeah. Getting, like, little pineapple sparkles oh, in front of my eyes. Oh, and the prickly pear. Okay. Um, I like that it's doing a kind of a warm and cool simultaneous thing that I had described in the past, like the pumpkin spice absinthe kind of did, where it's just like the the green musks are cool, and but they don't end up going like aquatic. And I think I just stuck it right in my goddamn nose. I should know better. That's a noob error. I tend to, th like the pineapple note is one that I, in my experience, doesn't like have a lot of endurance so on the skin I'm really curious to see like how you know who, who how the race is run who makes it to the finish line so some people at the lab were saying that it reminded them of a candy when they were bottling it and I gotta say I agree it kind of reminds me of airheads hmm. and I don't I don't mean that in a bad way it's just the, you it's mean the, the, the fruity the fruitiness of the, yeah, like the pineapple and the prickly pear, I'm like, I definitely got like a weird flash of eating airheads. For me, there's something really specific about the feeling of, in this perfume, of how in LA, Halloween and all of October is like a warm weather season. It doesn't cool off usually until right around Halloween or after. And it's interesting to have a kind of a warm weather pumpkin scent. There's something a little like uh, uneasy about it because it's just kind of like doesn't match what the expectation is. Like a lot of these perfumes like really channel like this, the fall season and it's like all of the stuff that you would expect or fantasize about all year. And in SoCal it's very different. And this kind of really seems like that. It's like the, the smell of walking into like a store selling Halloween stuff but like when it's like a hundred degrees outside. You know, and the LA River really encapsulates all of that because it's just like there's like some moisture, <laughs> you know, like there's like, but it's also like uh, a blighted area. There's like lots of like a human presence and a lot of garbage. So this is like a really interesting kind of like uh, jumble that seems really specific to like the local thing. Yeah, but also like. As it just as a fragrance, it's like this, like sweet, fun, fruity, hint of fall. Yeah, like, yeah, hint of summer, hint of fall. It's absolutely charming. It, it is kind of actually really endearing. I think. Yeah. It has a kind of its own like plucky like character to it, which might not really. It's, you know, some people will buy this. I think because they just have to know like what it smells like, and not. It's not. I don't know. Like it's definitely not for everyone. I don't know who it's for. It's for me, I yeah. guess. 
There you go. Someone out there. I've enjoyed putting it on here and there, and I actually want to put it on and go down to the river and see how it vibes. You're like, matches up. You want to do one more? One more weenie for the road? Oh, that's just... That's fun. Yeah. I'm glad to hear somebody else say they enjoy it, because sometimes I think it is just a me thing, and then I worry, because I'm like, remember how other people are supposed to enjoy this? I'm hungry. Is it because of the pumpkin, or is it because it's afternoon? Both. Or I'm just like, that's yummy, and I want to eat. The last one we have, well, this might change that. Um, the last <laughs> one we have is X-rayed candy bag. Which is a new GC for this year, and it's kind of a riff on the last year we did the urban legends about candy tampering. And, uh, you know, there's been kind of, in response to the urban legends, which people interpret as real, there is like a lot of hospitals offer like day after Halloween candy x ray services to parents who are just nervous about whatever. And uh, so this is a scent of the candy bag being x rayed. It says, the sugary contents of last night's trick-or-treat ba bucket blasted with atomic particles at your local hospital, producing a stark image of ghostly treats in a greeny-white radioactive glow. Again. Okay. What am I smelling? You know what I'm saying? This one scared me a little bit. But it was like, I like that it's like a fun throwback to like a collection that was a lot of fun last year, you know? Oh, I have so much pumpkin wafting up. I know! And I'm like, I just got it, and I was like, whoa! There's no pumpkin in this. That I know of. So. <laughs> okay, I smell candy. It's like a weird but riddle. It's like kind of like a ghost. This is like a trick that's being played on me where I have to, I read something and then I smell it and I have to make sense of it. It's just like a, it's like a Hellraiser cube of a perfume. It's going to stab me. It's almost like... Like embalming fluid, but like with candy in it. Like that's what I would compare yes. to. Is that crazy? Uh, in the bottle, that's what I get. There's a definitely a kind of a sterility, which is interesting. Maybe like an aldehyde or like something fuzzy. <sighs> Fizzy. Fizzy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Something fuzzy, all something right. Fuzzy. I'm gonna put a little of this on the skin. Okay. So okay. I hadn't had the embalming fluid thought before. It wouldn't surprise me if there was some overlap there, like maybe some aloe uh -huh. as like the kind of greeny white element. I thought maybe before it could be melon, but like I don't think that's it. Another suspicion of mine could be like matcha. I think there is like a, a maybe a green tea note. I thought from the candy description that it might be like chocolatey. Weirdly it's more about the x-ray. You know, like it, the candy is, is there. It's a ghost. The it's it's like, ghost candy. Yeah. Just like in the image, you know. This was candy once. Now it's science. Do you, are you getting the tea thing or the aloe thing? Am I crazy? Yeah, I think that that's, that's probably what I was getting it and why I was comparing to embalming fluid. fluid. Um, but I hadn't made that connection before, so that's fun. So it's not super sweet and sugary. It has this kind of like dry, flat ghostliness that is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, is there an aldehyde or something, do you think? I, I can't really tell because I also feel like I'm smelling the inside of the treat bucket. Like there's like a plasticky quality maybe. Maybe that's it. It's got like a freshness like though. Yeah, it does. There's something almost more aquatic in this one than there was in the L.A. River Pumpkin. Maybe some lime? It's possible that there's like a like a lemon or a, a lime, lime, like a citrus squeeze of that, but it's that embalming fluid, right? That's what you would... Right. Right. See, that's another, another suspect. Yeah. This is just going to be... Like, I just think this is so much fun. Someone out there, this is for you. Um, let me know if it was you, because I want to know who the x-ray candy bag freaks are. Show up for me. Yeah, I was, um, oh, sorry. I tried this on before, but didn't smell it too deeply, and I felt, it just made me feel nervous. Going, it's like sometimes you need a buddy, you know? Well, 
That's seven weenies that we released. <laughs> uh, every time I say it, it's like there's only so many. After a while, you don't even hear yourself talking about weenies anymore. It's the same with like Shungos and at work. We just like very casually like, oh yeah, penis bound with gold ribbon. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, I need like 17 of penis bound with gold ribbon. <laughs> it's weenie season. That's the thing I'm saying. Weenie right. season. Now it's weenie season and we talk about weenies a lot. This is the lot. weenie bucket. Oh, we need more weenies. Yeah. Weenie, weenie, weenie. Weenie, 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 weenie. Uh, so... On the way home. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. You've done... A, you've risen to the occasion admirably. You worked. You pumpkin, lived. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. You sniffed. <laughs> yeah. I know, and I smell so weird right now because yeah, we really picked some, some like real medley. strange <laughs> scents to like blend together on here. Um, but what a fun time! So we'll be smelling. We have so many more of these. I don't even know. There's like a, a, a Brazilian collections included in this release, and I would love to try to film more uh, before they sell out. Although, again, it's not an empty uh, promise. We are hoping to be able to restock some of these eventually. But for the initial rush right now. We have exactly what's like listed in in stock on the website, and when that runs out, it's gone for now. So um, good luck, everybody, and we hope that you're gonna enjoy getting these. And that you know, I'll be stalking the reviews over at the bpal.org forum to see who shares my bizarre sense of what is appropriate to inflict on people, fragrance-wise. It's always a good time. Um, is there anything from the collection that you already love that you want to mention before we review it, just so that people know the, um, the Galen fave? I actually have not smelled a lot of them, but I am okay. really excited about Autumn 1990. Oh, Which I yeah. did... Um, did you bring that home? I didn't, because it was not bottled yet. And okay. So, um, All right. But it is based on Beth's memories of being a, a goth teenager, and I just thought that was really sweet, but also like, <laughs> the scent is like, yep, that's... That's just like walking around with your friends at night while I'm they're just, smoking clothes. At this point, it's, I'm just impressed that great. Beth has memories of being a gothic teenager because, you know, like, not everyone, not everyone gets to hold on to everything <laughs> from their misspent youth. Um, we're very lucky to have her and that she can remember. Uh, and then we'll pass all this down on to Lilith, whose whose job will be, uh, you know, to, to keep the uh, Akashic records of all of our hilarious uh, mistakes. So, on that note, uh, Galen and myself and Slumbering Disco and Slumbering Heloise and Abelard all wish you an incredible Halloween season. Thank you so much for your help in spreading the word about our uh, gigantic, bizarre perfume collection. And uh, everyone's comments about the puppet video were very sweet and kind, and I will treasure them always because that was a lot of work. So uh, we'll be back soon. Maybe we'll get some guests on the couch, and that will be that. Deal? Bye. Bye. Bye.